we're making a clear distinction between um, communications that are credible threats um, or that amount to a campaign of harassment on the one hand. Uh, those types of cases will be robustly prosecuted. On the other hand, um, where a communication uh, is, as it were, merely offensive, offensive mm. grossly offensive, uh, etc., then um, principles of free speech and free expression um, require there to be a high threshold um, and dictate that a prosecution is unlikely to be in the public interest in many of those cases. Mm. And the um, uh, factors which will suggest people might not be prosecuted include things like deleting it quickly if you've sobered up in the morning. Can you explain about that? One thing that's very important in this area is that where free speech um, protects uh, the subject matter, um, a prosecution must be proportionate. And when considering whether a prosecution is proportionate, the question of whether a communication is removed quickly, uh, whether the individual expresses remorse, whether access to the communication is blocked, these are obviously relevant to any assessment of proportionality. And will it be more or less likely for individuals to be prosecuted criminally now when they're using Twitter or Facebook, do you think? It's not possible to say whether it's more or less likely. There simply haven't been enough cases. But this is clearly signalling that in those cases that are protected by freedom of expression, um, then there's a double safeguard, a high threshold, um, and consideration of the public interest uh, before a prosecution will be brought. Thank you very much.